So hi all you locker nuts. Bring it out, yeah, bring it out. Take it out of the bag. Take it out of the bag, set it on your thing here. I don't, I don't Everything's free. Free sale. And so I brought along the magic cards because he's been anxious to look at it and I've been anxious to have him look at it. This card in this condition alone uh, tends to go for uh, 2000 plus. Wow. Yeah. Previously on Locker Nuts, we went to another pallet auction by a moving and storage company. We bought a ton of stuff, but I can't say it's been a ton of fun. Most of what we've uncovered turned out to be furniture and regular low-end merchandise. And trash. Plenty of trash. The best find was a 32 gram gold bracelet. The worst find? Well, let's not talk about that. Now that we've gone through all the boxes, it's time for another trip to the flea market. Our third flea market trip this week. Alright, good morning Locker Nuts. It is like 4.30 in the morning and just leaving for the flea market trying to be quiet. You see here I've got the, the uh, load double tarped because it has been raining overnight. Isn't that fun? So right now, while all the neighbors are sleeping, I gotta get this tarp off, be quiet, and then get out of here and get to Stockton. First my coffee. And there it is. It's gonna be a glorious day. Good morning. All right, it's about seven o'clock. I got here eh, a little bit before six, so one hour of setting up. I already sold, oh, I don't know, 75 bucks, 70 bucks, something like that. Let me show you what I got out. So you can see how this uh, day is progressing from the beginning. All right, and it's, again, it, this iPhone 11 does such a great job in low light, it looks a lot lighter than it is. It's still a little dark. There's a lot of fog. Not in this area, but all surrounding is fog. It's kind of weird. You got a clear spot right here. Uh, but here's a junky, funky mess right here. I just kind of dumped the boxes out on the tables clothes, miscellaneous, some stuff left over from the, uh, not that, but some stuff left over from Concord, some stuff left over from the antique fair, and here's some more clothes, there's a few boxes, I mean, I'm just kind of using this spot right now just to spread stuff out, but it's actually mostly cardboard, so, so I already sold the one TV, oh no, the other TV's over there, 20 bucks, guy wants it. Sold all that already. Sold the mattress, 35 bucks. And most of this is garbage. There's Aziz in action. Doesn't know he's on camera or else he'd be cussing me out right now. And then here is uh, some stuff I have to unload still and then some stuff that's going to dump, like all this stuff over here. Dump, a little bit more merchant. Dump, mostly dump. And I gotta get this thing at least visible. Even if I don't get it off, I gotta get it visible. So hopefully someone will take it. So over here is Storage Auction Pirate. He's here today. Uh, but our other friends, Alex, Manuel, Jeebus, they are not here, so. It's me and Mike. And Uncle Mike. And Tony. I use this I used this spot this morning just to spread some stuff out. I had the box springs over here and this inflated mattress thing right here two TVs but pretty much we sold uh, most of the stuff someone's already paid for the TV coming to pick it up so now what should we do all right so here we have a customer that came by and he's carrying around this bag with a human skull in it so I asked him hey is it okay if I get that on camera apparently he bought this from the vendor across from me who also buys storage lockers and he had the whole human skeleton but everyone's too creeped out by the legs and the arms um, so th I don't know why, but they agreed to sell the guy just the skull, 20 bucks. Yeah, so here we take a look at it. I'm sure it came out of a locker, but I wonder where it came from before that. Wow, look at that. Gross. Look at that. 
Wow. There's the bottom. So it looks like it had it all together at one point. And then uh, maybe someone dropped it or something because this is the uh, part of the face here. Hmm. That is so cool. So cool. That's where the brain stem goes in right there. Wicked. And now I don't have to pay for a booth there. Saves me 10 bucks. All the steps over here. When you get up at 4 in the morning, you know what that makes 10 a.m.? Lunchtime. <laughs> All that for five bucks. Good deal. Everything's free here. Free sale. Everything's got to go. Getting use out of my new cowbell here. Everything's free. Yeah. Everything's free. Free sale. Oh. We'll put the cat drug in. Yeah, I skipped right over the dollar. How's that? Yeah, that's where to get all the people over here and get it all out of here. <laughs> Want me to yell for you? Sure. Everything's free. Everything's free. Free, free, free. What's up, man? Oh, man. Are you in the boxes? Yeah, well, the. Everything under the table is all empty. Maybe a little garbage. Everything's free. Gratis. Free, free, free. Everything's free. Everything's free, gratis. Everything's free, gratis. Free, free, free. Everything's free. Free, free, free. Gratis. Everything's free. All right, guys, just left the dump. Well, you can't really see it, but there's the transfer station, the dump out here close to the Stockton Flea Market. I think technically we're in Manteca, but 820 pounds of dump, junk, trash gone. And it was $32 minimum. Not bad. And now it's time to get my cheapy cheapy gas. Look, 329 a gallon, 329, 3.299, basically 330 a gallon. Woo, that's cheap. I know some of you in some parts of the country are watching this going, that's not cheap. Well, here in the Bay Area, that's cheap. Oh, well, actually, I'm technically right outside the Bay Area now. I'm in the, what we call the Central Valley. Now I'm going to grab a coffee. All right, we blew out a ton of stuff at the flea market, but believe it or not, we didn't sell very much money. All those dollar items, they really don't add up to very much. And as you saw, if you watched the past few videos, the unboxings from this batch out of those pallets, Really, there wasn't very many good finds. And the good stuff I kind of put aside uh, to go through and maybe list a few things here. And of course, the gold bracelet didn't go to the flea market. But um, $230 in sales. That was it. That was it for all that work. Then we got $30 for the booth and $31 for the dump. We're left with about $170. So not a great use of my time. And uh, not a lot of money, really. But it's okay because we still got rid of a lot of stuff. And this kind of stuff I just don't like to deal in. Dollar, two dollar, three dollar items. This is not where we're going to make the money that we need to make to keep buying lockers. All right, you guys. So um, free sale. Got rid of a ton of stuff. Went off to new homes. Made a bunch of people happy. 
Some of them make a few bucks off reselling it. Good for them and good for me. But the rest of it, gone. Because uh, that's what we're doing right now. We are purging out, trying to make room to buy more lockers here. We need to make room. We need to get stuff gone. We need a clean slate for 2020. But I wanted to back up just real quick. If you saw the other pallet auction that we bought, we found some very interesting magic cards. Uh, that was one of the last things that we went through. So we've had our friend Greg come over. This is a little bit older footage. We had our friend Greg come over and take a look at those cards. So I just wanted to show you uh, what we found out, what the value was, and maybe you'll learn a few things about magic cards, because I certainly did. All right, you guys, we are at the unit here uh, in Livermore. So this is close to Greg, and so I brought along the magic cards because he's been anxious to look at it and I've been anxious to have him look at it. So we're gonna let Greg uh, share with everyone what we've got here. So hi all you locker nuts, glad that you can uh, have an opportunity to take a look at the magic cards with me. Um, we already went through and tried to isolate the more valuable cards. There are cards from um, a couple key set, key later sets called Born of the Gods and Theros. And if we actually looked, you know, the main cards out of this particular set, um, just the looks like it's one of every card, one of every rare or mythic out of this. The mythic represents this little red um, emblem here versus a gold one. If I can find a gold example, that just represents what they call a rare. So these cards are worth anywhere from. $30 all the way down to around five, six bucks. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of other cards from that set that range probably from 25 cents all the way to $5. So we kind of initial estimate just for these top cards was like 160 bucks. And then here we have this other set um, and we looks like they're the top six or seven cards here. Same thing. They have rare rarities um, mythic versus these gold cards and basically these are about 60 bucks up top here and then again random probably anywhere from 25 cents to five bucks so those were the key collection portion of this um we kind of looked through everything else most of it was commons and uncommons that don't have a lot of value. There's some other little niche randoms. There's like a Sarah Angel, which is uh, from Revised, which is a very old set. And also there is Singer Vampire, which is um, another old card, which probably has like a 50 cent and nostalgic card, original card for a lot of old, old players. And then there's a bunch of other um, random um, rares, you know, anywhere from probably like I said, 25 cents up to five bucks. So it's quite a few rares for this uh, collection. Um, and most of these look like they were, you know, packed to sleeve, pretty well protected. So this stuff is going to be pretty good. Kind of estimate the range of the collection between 200 to 350 if you were to, you know, try to isolate down for, you know, the, the cards. So uh, a fun, nice newer collection that uh, a young person would be appreciative to be playing with and start a collection. Nice. All right, here's a tip for you guys. Here's the site that Greg uses to look up the prices of cards. This is mtgstocks.com, and you can access it through your cell phone, um, it, your smartphone. It's very easy to use on the mobile device, mtgstocks.com. So if you click the menu button at the top, and then you see at the top there's sets. So once you click that, you're going to see all the different sets of cards. And what's useful here is those little tiny icons appear on the card. So if you don't know what you have, you just look at the icon on the card and try to find it in this long list here. And there's a lot. So for example, here we click Dissension. And it's going to list all the cards in that card set. And there's a, you know, a lot of cards in each of the sets. You can toggle those the types of cards there. So you see I've only left rare on and turned off uncommon and common. That's going to shorten the list down a little bit. And Greg showed you how you can tell which cards are rare based on the color. So there, when you click on that little button, you can arrange them by descending price, which will put the most expensive at the top. So basically what you want to do is you want to 
click on those most expensive ones to get familiar with what they look like. So you can look in your card decks and see if you have those more expensive cards. The cheaper ones, it doesn't really matter. Um, you definitely want to look for those high value ones. And you can see there, there's quite a bit of difference. The top, what, four are in the $20 range. There's a couple more in the $10 range. And then $5 and below for pretty much everything else. And it drops quick. So the, it's really like the top six that you want to look for. Let's look at another, another set here. This one's Conflux. And here we've got Mythic and Rare. So let's look for those. Um, and, but you'll see something interesting here. Even though the other deck didn't have Mythic cards, uh, the values weren't really that much different. So this one right here is the $35 card. So if you can find that Noble Hierarch right there, $35. Let's change the set now to something different. Let's go to Dragons of Tark here. And again, we're going to turn off the lower cards, the more common ones. Uh, arrange the price. And there we've got a $21 card. Kolog's Command. Uh, probably, probably mispronouncing that, but there you go. So let's take a look at some of your cards. Sure. I got some samples here. Some of these are what we call alpha cards. So there's a, I'll take this one out here. So this is like what's called a dual land. It's called a, it's a scrub land. And the reason why I know it's alpha, is because of the very rounded corners that it has on these edges. Now this card is probably like medium played. It's got some dings, some dents, but even though it's got some dings and dents, it's worth over a thousand dollars. Wow. Um, here's a couple other samples. These are, uh, and, and the reason why alphas are so predominantly uh, valuable is because they only printed 1,100 of each of these cards hmm. worldwide when they first came out. Wow. Okay. Um, and then in total, the total print run for alpha was only like three to four million, roughly. Then we have what's called beta cards. These these are beta cards now. The reason why these are beta is they change the um, rounding of the corners. And this was a side card by Anson Maddox, beautiful artwork um, from that uh, era. And they rounded the corners to be more card-like and uniform. So this one's probably what, somewhere between 75 and $125. Uh, the next series or set just kind of wanted to bring those to light. This was a set from Unlimited, and so this is probably one of the more valuable cards, uh, Chaos Orb and a Mox Jet. So just this card in this condition alone uh, tends to go for uh, 2,000 plus. Wow. Yeah. And then this card destroys a card and you usually used to be able to use it and then flip it and land on a card. And if you touched it, it would be destroyed. Is that right? <laughs> Got a junk lanch over here. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a few other sets. They, uh, part of the what they call the Four Horsemen. I didn't bring one of them antiquities. But they have uh, um, Arabian Nights, which is these cards with the scimitar in the middle. So these cards range from like 100 dollars all the way up to like 800 800 to a thousand for what's called the library of alexandria wow. um they have uh legends which comes up with this pillar uh just cards have fluctuated as of late but most of these are like between uh 30 40 dollars and up to probably 200 for the Mary Universe. Was, is this the artist signature also? Yeah, this is uh, Brian Snotty. I actually met him in 08 um, and had him just sign the cards. I think, you know, I'm not, you know, what, the only thing is is that there are people that collect signed cards, but there are also people that believe that cards being signed damage or deface the card. And mm. so, and then if you've ever played a championship deck, you can get a pre-made championship deck uh, that was uh, piloted by some of the people that played in world championships back in uh, the late 90s to 2000 era. And uh, you know, so it, you can you can acquire these if you just kind of want to get a feel for what it was like basically in the late 90s and 
in early 2000. Anyway, cool. just thought I would just kind of share that uh, pieces of information. Hopefully that uh, your viewers uh, get some excitement out of that a little bit and uh, scratch their hair just as long as I do with uh, how Magic is. Magic is, has 12 million registered players. That's just registered. They go to play at stores. There's probably another eight to 10 million that are kitchen top players that you know go, don't go into uh, registered um, tournaments uh -huh. as much. So it's a pretty, and it's 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 pervasive. It's in every country you can imagine. Huh. You know, it's everywhere. It's worldwide. Thanks for sharing this. Sure. <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. A lot of information there. Greg was a great resource for learning about magic cards. And uh, like Greg said, we have a collection that's worth anywhere from $200 to $350 for the cards. So um, not a bad little find, right? Not a bad little find. I'm happy with that. I would have rather have found Greg's collection, but I'm going to keep hunting. Maybe someday I'll get something that good. Uh, Greg obviously has spent a lot of time collecting and has some real treasures in his collection. So that was really fun to take a look at uh, some of the better cards that he owns. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't yet, hit the thumbs up and show us that you like these adventures that we take you on with us. It's so fun for us to do it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and hit the notification button so you'll know when the next videos are coming out. We may have a little bit more stuff here. Let me look around. <clears throat> Maybe there's a little bit more to share with you out of the pallets, but we're getting down to the end of it. So you know what that means? Time to start buying some more lockers so we have more stuff to share with you guys. Until next time, good luck to you. God bless you. We'll see you next time here on Loggin' It's.